Hello, my name is Jeffrey Silberswag. I'm a professor of clinical medicine at Weill Cornell Medical College and the chief medical officer at the Robeson Institute in New York City. I'm happy to talk with you today about dialysis-related amyloidosis and provide a perspective from the United States. Analysis of Congo red staining amyloid deposits taken from patients with end-stage kidney disease revealed beta-2 microglobulin as the source of those deposits. Beta-2 microglobulin is a 12,000 Dalton molecule. It's produced at a rate of 0.159 milligrams per hour per kilogram, or a total of about 200 to 300 milligrams daily for an average patient. Normal kidney function removes beta-2 microglobulin, resulting in a plasma concentration that ranges between 1.5 and 3 milligrams per liter. In patients with end-stage kidney disease, removal is reduced and levels can reach 25 to 35 milligrams per liter. A four-hour hemodialysis treatment clears only 1.32 milligrams per kilogram, or about 275 milligrams weekly. As a result, beta-2 microglobulin accumulates at a rate that's estimated to be about 70 grams per year. The incidence of dialysis-related amyloidosis seems to be decreasing in the United States, but some have suggested that we may see increases in DRA as more patients with more severe comorbid conditions enter dialysis treatment. There are some known risk factors for DRA, which include older age, greater dialysis vintage, meaning more than 10 years of dialysis therapy, loss of residual renal function, and dialysis with low flux or bioincompatible dialysis membranes. Factors that favor amyloid formation include low pH in the tissues and molecules that stabilize the polymerization of beta-2 microglobulin amyloid fibrils. In addition, advanced glycation end products modify beta-2 microglobulin to allow the generation of an amyloid locus. When these loci are exposed to macrophages, the macrophages can produce pro-inflammatory cytokines which result in most of the clinical features we recognize as dialysis-related amyloidosis. Common clinical features include carpal tunnel syndrome, which affects about 10 to 20% of patients who've been on dialysis for more than 10 years and is frequently bilateral. Tendinitis and trigger finger occur in about 15% of patients on dialysis for more than 10 years and can be found on imaging as thickening on ultrasound or MRI. Back, neck, and shoulder pain occur in up to 20% of patients treated for more than 10 years and can be seen as associated with narrow intervertebral spaces on imaging. The diagnosis of beta-2 microglobulin-related dialysis-related amyloidosis requires identification of two major findings. Major findings include involvement of multiple joints with pain, carpal tunnel syndrome, trigger fingers, dialysis-related spinal lesions, and bone cysts. Cases with one major finding and one or more minor findings are identified as doubtful. The minor findings include bone fractures, ischemic colitis, and subcutaneous skin lesions. Dialysis-related amyloidosis can also be diagnosed based on pathology, which can come from carpal tunnel repairs or from other surgical tissue specimens. Treatment of dialysis-related amyloidosis centers around the reduction of beta-2 microglobulin levels, which can be accomplished through successful kidney transplantation, high-flux hemodialysis, more frequent hemodialysis, meaning up to 48 hours weekly, hemodiofiltration, or the use of beta-2 microglobulin absorption columns, which can increase clearance by as much as 50% at each dialysis session. Unfortunately, these columns are not readily available in the United States so that most patients with DRA are treated symptomatically. Thank you for your time and attention.